in this video on making jigsaw puzzles. Jigsaw puzzles is probably one of these easiest things that you could do on a scroll saw. I will show you one version of many that I use. By doing this type of jigsaw puzzle you'll learn two new techniques that most people do not show you. Please let me remind you that this is one of many different types of jigsaw puzzles and I hope you watch future videos to learn several more. I'm going to show you the basic drawing out of a grid pattern and a technique I like to use called flip side cutting. Please email me at scrollsawvideo at gmail.com with any questions or comments. First step in making this puzzle, you have your regular Christmas card such as this tent style Christmas card Keep it folded and just to the outside of this fold, you'll cut it with your scissors. Doing this will cut the, uh, the creases from the fold completely off and it won't be seen. Now you're going to use both pieces of this puzzle, the picture part and the part that is signed. We'll put this down and come back to this part later. We're going to work on this part. This card is approximately three and a half inches by five inches. The basic Christmas card style. Okay, my my one eighth inch piece of plywood. Use a quality plywood. I put the good side down and I get my Christmas card. I'm going to place it on the wood. Next step I'm going to take some old newspaper. I'm going to lay it down across my wood here just like this. Okay, the reason I'm using the newspaper is when I pick up my card, my, my piece of plywood is very large for this piece. Uh, instead of cutting down the whole piece of wood, I just covered it up with newspaper. Most scroll saw patterns, you will spray the back of the, the pattern and stick it to the wood. But when you're doing jigsaw puzzles, you want to directly spray it on the wood itself. Nice coat, a nice good coat. Get your puzzle, your picture, place it on the wood. You move these pieces of newspaper out of the way. Grab an old hotel card, such as this, hotel key card an old credit card, uh, anything that's got a good stiff edge. You can use a driver's license, credit card, anything of that type. Just gently smooth out your picture that's on the wood, starting from the inside out. This will relieve any kind of bubbles that are under the paper. Being careful not to go all the way to the edge you don't want to get any glue on this card. If you get glue on the card, it's liable to transfer to the picture. But just gently do this until you feel it's adequately smoothed out. Okay, I'm going to let this dry for about 10 minutes. Now I'll come back and... The glue is now dry on this project. So now I'm going to cut out this picture that's going to be our jigsaw puzzle. You may have noticed that I'm using a different saw than I normally do. This is my RBI Hawk 226. Which uh, normally I'll use when I have a lot of uh, inside cuts, I'll use the DeWalt. But on jigsaw puzzles, I like using this saw. Here we go. Okay, I think you get the general method. I'm going to turn off the cameras and be right back.
the project is now cut out. All the edges are cut off. The back is clean, nice finish. I, I take a sanding sponge, regular ordinary sanding sponge. The brand that I like to use is called Merca. I like to take the um, sanding sponge and just go over the cut edges just to remove any tear out if there happens to be any. Very easy to do. Next step. The next step I've laid some newspaper down. So I get my, my project. Get the deft spray lacquer. Lightly spray a couple of coats on there. It dries fairly quick. Gonna let that dry three or four minutes. I'll come right back to it. This is where my version of jigsaw puzzles are a little bit different than most other people's. A lot of videos will tell you to get a scrap piece of board, glue your pattern down, which would be the same size as this. After you glue your pattern down, you fit it on top of here, tape it down, and proceed to cut it out. My method is a little bit different, a little bit more economical. You don't have to use scrap wood. Turn the picture over. Now I use an Ingra gauge. You can use whatever you have laying around. Uh, any kind of ruler is fine. But I mark off, just for simplicity reasons for the video, I'm going to go every one inch. <laughs> Pretty close. Okay. Mark these. Okay, you'll have your grid laid out on the back of your actual puzzle. Uh, I have a previous video which shows how to make a grid pattern in the, the ball and sockets. If you'd like to refer back to that, that would be fine. But this is pretty self-explanatory. Okay, I have the grid marked out. Draw some balls and sockets. It doesn't matter where you put your ball and sockets. Uh, it's your puzzle. Uh, I like mine being uniform all the way across, but just personal preference. It doesn't really matter. Let me stress also that after you do set several puzzles, you won't need to mark your grid out. You'll, it'll just be second nature to you uh, where to make your turns and twists and curves and the whole nine yards. Let me zoom in on this so you can properly see the grid throughout the whole piece is marked out. Okay, this is the second thing I'm going to do that nobody else will tell you how to do. I'm going to use the Flying Dutchman scroll saw blade. And when I put the picture down, pretending this is the scroll saw table, I'm going to put the picture face down. And because we had earlier put the death lacquer on it, it's not going to get scratched up as you're rubbing it across the table. So as I follow these lines with the scroll saw, I'm going to cut one row at a time, or the other direction. It doesn't matter which way you go, but I always like to cut one row or column at a time. Here I have the puzzle that we're going to cut. I'll wipe off my table, make sure there's no excess dust on it. Turn the pattern, turn the project upside down. You'll see the markings on this side of the puzzle. And just for simplicity, I'm only going to cut one line across.
Okay, I purposely on this project did not take my time and did not follow the, uh, the pencil line exactly. You can see how, how bad off I am. So, after you get everything cut out, you hold complete pattern cut out. Put the puzzle back together. Completely put it back together and with your Merca sponge, clean off any pencil marks that you'll have. Very easy to do. see where my pencils are still left. I don't think you can see it. Still have pencil lines on this puzzle and this one's sanded away. Very smooth. I'll turn it over. There is not a bit of damage on this puzzle. Hope I explained this well. One more part in a short video. You remember the first part of the card, the back side. We save this, sign your name, Merry Christmas. Take your completed puzzle, put it with your signed piece. Wrap it in saran wrap, any kind of clear packaging wrap. Place it in the envelope. And send it to the person of your choice. Great Christmas gift. People love getting them. Hope you enjoyed this short video.